This is John for JohnJustBeat.com. Today I have a, I'm on the beat. I have a very special guest. I have artist Sergio Santos of El Santos World. How are you, sir? I'm doing excellent. I hope you are too. I am. I'm doing great, man. I'm talking to a world class artist. I've I followed your work for a, a while now, and I'm very uh, very grateful that you're giving us some time to learn a little bit more about what you do. Oh well, thank you. Thank you for taking that time. Well, let's jump right into it. Um, when did you start your art career and when did you know that you could actually do it as a lifelong career? I, you know, since I always, I say my, my first box of crayons that started the career, but um, when I was 18, I was in photography class and um, I kind of had a big mouth. So <laughs> I talked myself into doing some jobs with the camera and that's what started the art career. Um, you know, I, um, I did photography for a while and, um, I would get art grants and I don't know what it was. I just, I, I kind of feel like I wasn't too bright. <laughs> like when I, when I learned to swim, I just jumped in the pool, not thinking that, um, maybe that wasn't a good idea. And, um, as far as creativity, it's kind of like that. I, I did photography for a good run, and I had a really good career going. And then one day I said, well, I'm going to paint. And then here we are. <laughs> well, like, you know, like, and who knows what's next? Well, to me it's amazing because, you know, we all draw when we're kids. We have to draw in school. But to actually to sit there and think that your work is good enough and you have enough, uh, you're secure enough in yourself to do that. Like, how, how does that, how do you get to that point? Getting to the point where you think I can sell this. I've always said doing any type of creativity, like putting stuff on paper and telling somebody, um, hey, you should buy this. Take some gall. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, what, where did that come from? I I don't know. I mean, lots of things inspire you. Um, Andy Warhol's quote, art is anything you can get away with. The fact that he had other people making those a lot of those pieces for him and was just... Um, it, it made big statements. I guess that was very influential. I, I, I think once I started studying that, I worried less because I was more into photography at that time because I thought I grew up being told I couldn't draw. Um, you know, I was not the kid that got petted on in art class. Sometimes there was a teacher, um, but in general, I was not. There were some teachers that were. Um, encouraging but yeah you know i wasn't the golden kid of art by no means um i think that if you're creating you just have to get over that i don't worry about um and there's great examples in the art world there's a mr brainwash there's a good documentary called exit through the gift shop and you know he makes this career and um it's been highly criticized and because he just produces and produces and produces and they ask him about it and he says um well you know it's not up to me if it's any good or not i'm just i'm making it and it makes me happy i'm in the studio every day and as long as i have that as long as it's making me happy um it'll at least make one other person happy and that's good enough for me <laughs> Well, I mean, you got, a, you got a lot of followers online, including me. And you know, your art does make me happy too. I, you know, every I, I I wait to see the next um, the next thing you put up there. And I really love the time lapse. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here too, but I, I really yeah. love the time lapse stuff that you do. But your style is very unique. How would you describe your style? I approach it um, kind of in kung fu. There was the drunken master. Not that I'm an alcoholic or drinking all the time, um, but I 
I like to approach it like I'm stumbling into the piece. Um, that it, this piece just has to get done. There's not time to to sketch. Or although sometimes I have my moments where I do sit there and I fine tune. And, um, but for the most part, I'm. And, and not to say that I'm not taking time in it either, because it, it is even even messes. There's a there's a process to it, and there's an art to it. And that just develops the more you, you do it, you know? And looking at your work online, your earlier work, you had a lot of earlier work, and then you kind of shift into, um, not exclusively, but you're doing a lot of like trading card stuff, where you're taking your vision of old trading cards, or you're, you're creating your vision of like the Ramones on a, a baseball card. How did, now, it's a two-part question. So I, I, the, the first part is how did you, why did you shift into the, the baseball card or trading cards thing? And the second is, you know, there's a lot of other people doing it, but I guess it's not really a question, but yours is so unique. A lot of, a lot of people, you, you like have a special take on those. Where does that come from? Well, the sports art started when, when COVID started. The first pieces that I made that were baseball related were these sad looking baseball players because I, um, the world had shut down. Traditionally, I would go out to the public in a tent in a gallery show in person. That's how I made my living. Um, so, uh, imagine my alarm, (laughs) single father of three. I really had a, what are we going to do moment? And, um, and so I, I, shifted my presence online which is really all i do these days um and you know i put those those were the first pieces that i put out during that initial i guess surge of emotions and um and i started to find other sports artists and just people that were they were excited about these pieces and um i think tops or yeah it tops did their thing where they produced a series of art cards and right. I was like, Oh, that's cool. And so I started doing cards as well. And I think the, the reason they have a different flavor is that drunken master thing I was talking about. Um, uh, you know, it's just, it's just kind of a raw style. And to me, it, it, it traces back to um, just the way I think about these 2D pieces as archaeology. There's a lot of texture. There's a lot that goes into it before you get that final trading card. And those those little things that you do to a surface, to a canvas, um, to your materials resonate a lot. And I think that's kind of a distinct voice that I've just gotten over over doing it. Like uh, you know, 365 days a year. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, um, walk me through it. Like, you, you just say, for instance, you pick, um, like a, I don't know, you pick a Michael Jordan card, and you decide to, you decide to, you know, recreate in your vision of whatever Michael Jordan card. But I find it fascinating, like, the way you write his name is not, like, like my mind, I can't <laughs> come up with that creativity. My, like, that... I, I, my mind doesn't work that way. And then like, even on the Jersey, like you might have B U L and then the S is way off to the side. And I think that's so cool. Is that something that's planned or is that as you're doing it, is that again, the drunken artist type thing that comes out? At, at this point, well, you know, I have my moments. I did a video uh, about a month ago. It was a Greg Jeffries, 1989 card. And, um, Despite knowing how to spell his name, I misspelled it. And I was like, well, no problem. Just put the E up here. And (laughs) so once in a while is an accident. I think it probably started as an accident, but I just like the idea that maybe somebody will look at that and be like, well, that's missing a letter. And Well, it's up here. Like it's above the player's head. I think it's one of the coolest (laughs) things, you know, it's, it's one of the things that makes your work so different. How do you pick the players that you do? Is it, do you do you look through cards, or is it just something pops in your mind? Well, sometimes it's a lot of the times it's commissions. 
people request a card. But if I'm left to my own, it's just who um, maybe I'm interested in. I'm always watching clips of sports. I'm always I'm always exposed to something, you know, whether it's players or pop culture. And usually it's something I'm interested in. Or if I listen to a podcast, um, there was a great one on uh, Spaceman Bill Lee. And then, you know, immediately I, I made a card of, of him. So it's just kind of what's in front of you um, as far as, like, my choices. But I just, I love, um, I love all sports, really. I, I grew up um, collecting trading cards a little bit in the junk era. <laughs> so my collection's worth nothing. But, uh, Join the but club. you know, but, it, you know, it inspired um all the things I'm doing, it, it did enrich my life, you know, my, uh, <laughs> my dad used to think I was silly. Well, it probably still does for, <laughs> for collecting that stuff. And, um, I'm like, well, you know, it kind of fed my family during a crisis <laughs> <laughs> that, that little kid. And, and I think that's the connection with people. Um, because, uh, when I interact with, um, you know, either somebody else who's creating or somebody who just likes the work, they, I mean, they have the same memories, you know, being in junior high or whatever. It was the excitement, like bringing cards to school. And it was it was a community. And it's nice to know that um, as adults, that wasn't jaded out of us. You know, we still geek out. We still... <laughs> <laughs> because I'll, I'll, like I'll, I'll put up a player and I'll, I'll think nobody will have a reaction to it, but they do. And it's like, yeah, I remember him. <laughs> I would say that's half the fun. Like, and you don't only do just do big stars. Uh, you know, Greg Jeffries had a nice career. I also saw you did a, a Tommy Hutton, which goes back to my youth. You know, Tommy Hutton was, hey, he made the major leagues. I'm not knocking him. But Tommy Hutton was a journeyman ball player. And and you did a card. Uh, you did his card. And I thought that was fantastic because you know there's so many artists doing all the top stars, and you kind of do a nice cross section of everybody. How did you come up with Tommy Hutton? Well, that one was a commission, and oh, that's what I love about commissions is um, I had not heard of them, but yeah, I started reading them. I'm still in the process of reading as I work on the card, but uh, that's how sometimes. But I do. Um, Sometimes it's just the card I was drawn to, like visually, and then I start to learn about that player. Um, the, I think the most powerful instance of that was um, I was part of, a, it's called the NLBMA art movement, I guess. And uh, the initial run of that was 100 artists, and we were raising money for the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, the 100 year anniversary. And I had already been working on uh, just looking up that history. And then it's just fascinating because it's not documented the way major leagues are. And so these, um, there's such a richness to those photographs and drawing from those and, and bringing those to life is, um, it, it, I, it's a great joy, and and it's nice to be able to share that and hear those names said and looked at and considered. Um, and that's what it is sometimes. You know, sometimes maybe this guy wasn't a superstar, but he was a player and he was awesome. <laughs> well, I, hey, I agree. You know, I agree. You know um, yeah. one of the coolest ones I saw you do, and I have, to me, I think it probably was one of the hardest ones. You did the the infamous um, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Julius Irving tri panel card. You know, <laughs> I'm not sure how big the the painting you did was, but to get all three of those on yeah, that, card, th that seemed amazing to me. That was a, a 16 by 20. Sometimes it's just cards I wish I had that I probably won't ever. Have. <laughs> 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 you know, sometimes I'm just painting the cards that. Uh, um, maybe I want it as a kid. Maybe I still want. <laughs> but yeah, I get. I actually have that card, so I'm I'm okay on that one. Wow! Oh, there you go. 
Cool. No. Do you do you do um, other than painting? Do you do you do you use colored pencils? Do you use any other media to um, to create? Yeah, you. I haven't done it in a while. Um, it's because my my studio space is in transition. But sometimes you'll see me bust out. Um, I will draw more. Um, I like watercolors. I like pastels. Um, on my website, you can find some of the works. They're mixed in there. But, but yeah, I, I like working on paper. It's a different, um, it's just a different feel. And it's a different different voice, really. So. And you, you mentioned you prior to the pandemic that you do shows. Do you ever do Comic Cons? Because I think your work would just go crazy wild in Comic Cons. I haven't gone back out into the public since. <laughs> The pandemic. I, I probably will at some point. It's just um, that was amazing because, like I said, I was a very live person. I was very social, and um, but I didn't realize that you could be social, recording on your phone and uploading videos. Because um, like for a while there, I was doing a podcast. I need a new computer. Like it was becoming too much, but. I was really zeroing in on the community that I want. Whereas when you're broad, like a comic Con's good because that's such a wide demographic that you can um, meet in a few days. Um, but the way I was showing was, um, it was a lot harder to really zero in. You'd get, you know, a few people, but when you publish like, on um, whatever media, social media, um, your chances of, of finding the people you really want to be talking to, um, not just as clients, but just, I don't know, the banter is cool, and it's part of what keeps that alive. I don't get, um, I don't get tired of doing this work because I love, I love the dialogue back and forth, and uh, I love the the artist community, and I love the community that appreciates us well it's working it's it's how i found you <laughs> so yeah what uh, very what cool question the music on the time lapse videos that you do what is that music i love that music that is um kidmentalmusic.com i i love this guy he uh i first approached him because i needed a, a theme song for my podcast called artist bebop and he did a tremendous job and so I was doing those videos at the same time and I, I just I wanted like theme music so I hit him up again and he has a what's called a patreon right so I subscribed to that and um, I think it's like a hundred a month 130 there I have to look it up but um, but anyways when when I have an idea he'll he'll make sounds or the music for me i think he's amazing he has a he, he does uh i don't know just a spectrum of music and it goes really, perfect with I'm, time I'm fortunate to have found him no i mean you made a great <laughs> choice because it goes perfect with the videos i i think those i really i i think those videos are the coolest things i i could watch those like all day and, and i have it. <laughs> maybe not all day i have it but i, I watched them for long stretches of time they're to me, it's amazing. It's amazing to, to watch the creation in in, uh, in progress. But before yeah, I let you go, awesome. before I let you go, this is your show. Tell everybody where they can find you. Promote whatever you want, sir. Okay, um, elsantosworld.com. That's my main website. If um, you see me, I sign up pretty much anywhere I, I can. I am allowed to. <laughs> so I'm on TikTok. I'm on LinkedIn. Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube a little bit, uh, El Santos World. If you, um, if you see me there, feel free to shoot a message and, and chat and, or comment or heckle. It's all, <laughs> it's all fun. <laughs> I don't think you get too many hecklers. I think you get a lot of applause because your work <laughs> truly is amazing. You know, I've, I've been going to Comic-Cons for 20 years and I meet a lot of artists and a lot of very talented artists. And your stuff, um, your, yours is one of the few that I've reached out beyond the Comic-Con world 
to to talk to because I, I I just really enjoy your work so much and I appreciate your I appreciate time. It. The only thing I would say is um, for the, the my viewers on Global Women's Sports Radio, we want to see more women um, more women athletes on yeah. your page. <laughs> but that's yeah. just, that's just a suggestion, you know. You um, oh, and I also if, want to say if you're, go ahead. yeah, if you're out there, I always ask for uh, I do daily videos pretty much. If you have a suggestion, bring it on because it puts it in my consciousness, and you're probably more likely to see it. So. Well, you did a you did a Roddy yeah. Piper. I know. I, I know. I suggested that, and then you did it. I'm not sure if that was because of it, but Roddy was one of my one of my favorites, and you've done a, a lot of wrestlers, and and my audience has been into wrestling as well, so we appreciate that. But with that, I encourage. I really, I thank you for your time. I thank you for your art. It's it's wonderful. It's beautiful. I encourage everybody to check you out. And with that, sir, I say thank you again, and let's uh, let's do this again sometime in the future. Let's catch up and get an update. For sure. Thank you so much. I thank appreciate you. it. You have, you have a great day, my friend. Bye.